Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I'm Peter Gross, co-host of the original Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins and Jim Fowler. For more than 50 years, Wild Kingdom explored wildlife and our natural world. Tonight's episode, and many others, focus on the timeless value of wildlife conservation. Wild Kingdom played a critical role in changing public attitudes about the importance of animals for the health of our planet and our own quality of life. We challenge viewers to learn about animals and get involved in conservation in their local communities. That call to action resulted in more visits to local zoos, nature preserves, and even observing animals in their natural habitats. And that connection with animals benefits all of us in the Wild Kingdom. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom right here on RFD TV. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom is presented by Mutual of Omaha, the people who pay. Wildfire. Sweeping through the forest in a storm of smoke and flame, it destroys everything in its path, driving thousands of panicked animals from their homes. Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Wildfire is one of nature's most awesome sights, a sight I witnessed in the big timber country of western Montana. I traveled there with Stan Brock, to conduct a study on the behavior of animals escaping from large fires. We chose a time when forest fires are fairly common, the middle of the dry season. We wanted to observe animals right along the fire line, so we requested permission to join the advanced troops of the firefighting forces, the famous smoke jumpers of the United States Forest Service. Permission was granted, and we flew to smoke jumper headquarters to wait for the next fire alert. The alert soon came when severe electrical storms swept through the pine-covered mountains bordering the National Bison Range. Lightning is a prime cause of fire, so I went to a lookout tower near the range to help search for signs of smoke. Here in the great timbered slopes of the Rocky Mountains, a dry storm struck last night. Lightning, but no rain. As the sun dries the dew, any smoldering fires the storm set will spread. We should spot the smoke. In a meadow below, a bull elk, an animal as majestic as this country. This is the breeding season when the bulls battle for herds of cows. This fellow's gathered a large harem, but I've seen them much larger sometimes as many as 60 or 70. There's an excellent view of the surrounding timberland from this fire lookout post. Hey, I've got company, a marmot. He's already putting on fat he'll need when it's time to hibernate. My presence doesn't disturb him at all. I guess he's used to sharing this hilltop with the lookout in the fire tower. But I'll bet Pepper, the tower mascot, keeps the marmot pretty close to its den. The lookout tower is perched at the hill's crest. From the top, you get an idea how big this country is. Inside is Ron Hendrickson. He scans the timberland constantly during fire season in summer and fall. If there's fire, it must be spotted quickly before it spreads. No sign of smoke. A good time to check communications with Stan, who's standing by back at Smoke Jumper headquarters. Marlin's signal is loud and clear. I'll wait here with Earl Cooley supervisor of the smoke jumpers, till a fire alert comes. It takes a lot of training to be a smoke jumper, and this is where it happens. 
A twisting jump would mean tangled lines and loss of shoot control. Here's where you learn the right way. Landing is even trickier. The forward speed may be 20 miles an hour or more. You've got to roll right, and that means practice. It takes great coordination and perfect physical condition. These recruits will go through four weeks of intensive training before they're ready for their first practice jump. Still no sign of fire, but we've seen lots of wildlife. A golden eagle on the hunt. Everything seems quiet. If the lightning started any fires, we should know soon. Smoke, probably dry underbrush burning on the forest floor. It'll soon set the trees afire. Every minute counts now. Ron Hendrickson reports the fire's size and location to the Forest Service Central Office. With the fire on an inaccessible mountainside, the decision is made to call in the smoke jumpers. Only by parachuting in can men reach the fire quickly enough to control it. The fire alert is sounded. We have a 10-man fire. Jumping will be Brock, Bradley, Nelson, Wall, McCray, Bennett, Ron Brock, Westpack, Morris. Speed is everything. The smoke jumpers must reach the fire before it has a chance to spread. I'll jump with them for a close look at escaping wildlife. You're well protected in the nylon jumpsuit. The padding helps in a hard landing and it keeps you afloat if you come down in a lake. Spotter Bud Clark will command the jump. Everything is almost ready. Small reserve chutes are attached, just in case. A converted DC-3 makes an ideal jump plane. It flies low and slow. I'm first Run. in, and last in line to Bradley. come out. Nelson. Wall. McCray. Bennett. Everyone's aboard. We're ready to go. We leave our shadow behind and head for the fire zone. It'll be a fast trip. There it is. We'll jump low, 1,000 feet. It's more accurate, but there's less time to correct mistakes. The spotter tells the pilot to reduce airspeed. It's time. The men will jump in teams of two. It's up to the spotter. He's got to time the jump so each man lands near the fire, but clear of smoke and flame. Almost there. Go! There are four seconds before the chute fully opens. A long four seconds. The first pass is completed. The first jumpers are on their way down to the wildfire. The jump was perfectly timed. The parachutes were coming down just a short distance from the fire line. We're on the last pass. Two more jumpers, then it's my turn. landing sites just upwind of the fire and smoke. 
Now we're over it. The helmet protects your eyes from tree branches. All set. Static lines attached. It pulls the chute open as you fall. The last two jumpers are almost down. And the others have all landed safely. Ready, now. The smoke jumpers can maneuver their chutes as they fall. They've got to be careful landing near trees. If a chute's grazed by a branch, it'll spill air and could drop them 40 or 50 feet. Perfect landing. A gust of wind has pushed me into the trees. Good, I'm caught. Every jumper carries a nylon rope to climb down from treetop landings. But I wish I were hung up more securely. Not quite what I had in mind, but no harm done thanks to the padded jumpsuit. It could have been a worse fall, but the chute caught at the last minute. We've landed close to the fire line, and the smoke jumpers are already at work with equipment dropped in separate cargo chutes. All the parachutes and jump equipment will be retrieved once the fire is out. The cargo chutes have come down right on target. Time to report back to Marlin. It's a large fire, and there should be many opportunities to study wildlife behavior. Marlin will scout the fire line from a helicopter, while I check it from the ground. just ahead. The smoke jumpers have a more difficult job here than they first thought. It looks like the lightning started several fires. They'll try to smother ground fires while they clear a fire line, cutting out the trees and brush that might be fuel for advancing flames. choking work. Your eyes water so you can hardly see. Any animals here would have left by now. I'll move on to where the smoke is less intense. There, hunting ahead of the fire line, a golden eagle. It's being harassed by a kingbird. These little birds simply won't tolerate eagles in their territory. There's what the eagle's after, a cottontail forced from cover by the smoke. You often see eagles and hawks flying along a fire line searching for animals fleeing the flames. Again. 
the end is quick and inevitable. No cottontail ever dies of old age. But it looks like the eagle's got a problem. The kingbirds. They simply won't give him any peace. Even the smoke doesn't convince the kingbirds to abandon their territory. So it's the eagle that must leave. But it carries its prize, captured with a little help from the wildfire. A rising breeze fanned the fire and made the smoke jumper's job more difficult. As a new outbreak of flame flared up, Stan moved to investigate. The smoke jumpers are fighting many small blazes now, trying to keep the small fires from becoming one large one. Downwind of the smoke, there's a sudden movement. A bobcat. It hasn't spotted me. The way he's favoring that paw, he may have stepped on an ember. The smoke is getting thicker and the cat's trapped against the stream. He has no choice. He'll have to swim. That current is swift. He's a strong swimmer. He's made it. Looks like the bobcat's as exhausted as he is wet. But he should be out of danger. There's the helicopter. Up here, the problem's plain. There are many small fires that threaten to become one big one. Here's one the smoke jumpers haven't reached yet. We'll report the location. Just ahead, an elk herd's been trapped between smoke on one side and the lake on the other. That heavy smoke's confused them, but the bull seems to be leading them in the right direction. If they follow him, they'll be all right. Looks like more wildlife farther ahead. This timber is also dry, it will burn easily. It's a dangerous situation. There's the animal I saw, a doe. She's moving fast and with good reason. Just behind her, a stand of pine topping out with flame. Sometimes a tree will explode like a cannon shot as moisture inside vaporizes in the heat. The dense smoke has separated a fawn from its mother, probably the doe we spotted. If it keeps moving this way, they should meet. The rising flames have driven two animals into the water. The raccoon's heading for a small island, and he's got company a black bear cub. It's a tiny island, and these two fellows are far from ideal roommates. But this will be home for a while. The far bank is burning too. A tough old male like this is a match for most animals, including a black bear cub. In such cramped quarters, there's bound to be trouble. It's a standoff. The bear's too big for the raccoon to intimidate. The cub probably just wants to be friendly. But this old male isn't anybody's friend. Mm -hmm. 
They're going to have plenty of time to get better acquainted. There's nowhere for them to go till the fires have burned out. Most animals seem to have already left. But down the shore, a marmot is watching the approaching smoke from his den. It doesn't look like he's going to run. That den is his security. And he seems reluctant to stray too far. He's not alone. Two cougars hunting the fire line. They've spotted him. If the marmot had wandered farther, they would have had him. Predators like these seem to patrol the fire line watching for fleeing animals. Prey that would normally be cautious are much easier to catch when the smoke drives them into the open. But the marmot seems safe in his den. That smoke must sting their eyes and burn their throats, but the cats seem determined to get the marmot. The marmot located his burrow entrance among some heavy rocks, making it extremely difficult for any animal to dig him out. He's out of danger now, but I don't think he'll be able to stay here very long. The fire is building fast, and the smoke's getting too thick for us. These small fires are being pushed through the dry timber by a rising wind. And from up here, it's easy to see that they'll soon join. The smoke jumpers are facing a runaway wildfire. Stan and I continued our observations as more and more animals fled the smoke and flames, their panic often making them easy prey for predators. The smoke jumpers did all they could to contain the blaze, but though they managed to slow its progress, the fire was still spreading out of control, and the wind was pushing it dangerously close to the buffalo herds of the National Bison Range. Till now, we had witnessed the fire as observers but we soon played a more active role as the flames encircled several animals. Next week in Wildfire Part 2, we'll see one of the most dramatic and unusual animal rescues ever attempted in the Wild Kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, the people who pay, has presented Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, helping people find Medicare solutions for over 50 years. To learn more about plan options or how to protect your kingdom, contact us today. Mutual of Omaha, protect your kingdom.